M51 was a medium tank developed on the M4 Sherman chassis for the Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF, to support the M50s with a more powerful gun. It was used in the Arab-Israeli conflicts of the Six-Day War in 1967 and the Yom Kippur War in 1973, and later in the Lebanese Civil War between 1975 and 2000. It was also used by Chile, which used it until 2006, making the M50 and M51 the second longest lived Sherman held vehicles in the world. This video has been sponsored by Armored Warfare. Armored Warfare is a tank action free to play online game in which you take the role of a private military contractor commander, master hundreds of unique vehicles, challenge other players from all over the world in player versus player, or team up in the story driven player versus AI. Join now and receive 7 days of premium time and a free Type 59-2A premium main battle tank to boost your mercenary career. Link in the description. Although the new 75mm gun armed M50s and other IDF Shermans enjoyed success during the Suez Crisis in 1956, there was a need for more modern and better armed combat vehicles. Although no Egyptian IS-3Ms and Centurions had been encountered by IDF forces, the threat of such vehicles, as well as the sale of modern armored vehicles to surrounding countries, including Syria, Jordan and Egypt, meant that Israel needed a counter to these threats should another war break out. To this end, initial attempts were made to secure more modern tanks, albeit with limited success. A request for M47s from the United States was rejected by the US for fear of upsetting the military balance of power in the Middle East. The British, after having rejected numerous requests for the Centurion, dating all the way back to 1953, finally relented in selling Centurions to Israel in 1959. Although only armed with a still respectable 20-pounder cannon, they were at least a step in the right direction, given that the most modern vehicle then in IDF service was the AMX 1375 light tank. However, the IDF recognized that these Centurions would not be acquired in sufficient numbers for some time, and the lack of a more powerful 105mm armament was still a concern. Thus, in 1959, a more expedient solution was desired, to help bolster the IDF's anti-tank capabilities in the short term. Given their past collaboration with Israel on the M50, the Bourge arsenal in France was asked to help design the new vehicle based on Israeli requirements. Their past experience meant that the Sherman was once again chosen as the basis for this new vehicle. After a relatively short development, the M51 would enter IDF service in 1962. There are two known prototypes of the M51 project. Both of these known prototypes used standard 76mm armed M4A1 Shermans as a basis, featuring the same Continental R975C4 petrol engine that the IDF would standardize on for its initial M51s. While the M51s in Israeli service were all equipped with the horizontal volute suspension system and wider tracks as standard, the prototypes still used the older vertical volute suspension system and narrower tracks. The French referred to these modified Shermans as revalorisé, meaning improved or upgraded, although it is unknown if this was a proper name or merely used by the French to differentiate them from unmodified Shermans. Where these two prototypes differed from each other was in the armament. What is believed to be the first prototype featured a cannon that remained relatively unchanged from that of the AMX-30, albeit featuring a T-shaped muzzle brake. This proved to be a failure and it can be inferred based on the changes made to the final version of the cannon that the older Sherman could not handle the stresses of firing such a modern armament. The second known prototype used another version of the cannon, the D1508, featuring a shorter L51 length barrel and a more efficient muzzle brake, 
This prototype would prove successful at meeting Israel's needs and would be standardized in IDF service as the M51. Given that the goal of the project was to get a powerful and modern 105mm cannon into service as quickly as possible, more restrictions were put into place than on the M50 project. It was decided to standardize on a single hull type, that of the M4A1, as this offered a large internal volume for ammunition stowage compared to other Sherman models. Likewise, the turret chosen was the 76mm armed T23 turret, as this provided the best chance of success for the new cannon to work. The outdated Continental R975 radial engine was kept, despite already being replaced in the M50s. The reasoning was simple, however. Israel needed this vehicle in service as soon as possible, and there were already problems getting enough M50s converted over to the Cummins VT8460 diesel engine that Israel could not afford any delays. To make up for this shortcoming, the wider HVSS was chosen for production vehicles, thus mitigating some of the weight gain without an unacceptable loss in mobility. Between 1961 and 1965, a total of about 180 of those M4 Sherman variants were converted in different Israeli workshops over to the M51 standard. These would take part in the 1967 Six-Day War and the 1973 Yom Kippur War with surviving vehicles either sold to Chile, converted to non-combat roles, or relegated to training and reserve units. While initial plans called for more vehicles to be converted, by the mid-1960s, vehicles such as the M48 and Centurion were entering more widespread IDF service. In addition, the acquisition of the 105mm L7 cannon for use on the Centurions and M48s meant that the M51 was already obsolete. This, combined with deteriorating relations between Israel and France, meant that conversion stopped in 1965. During their operational life, the M51s were constantly upgraded with a succession of small changes. In total, four different versions can be discerned. The first one was in service from 1962 to 1970, the second from 1970 to 1975, the third from 1975 to about 1981, and the fourth up to 1990, when the M51 was finally withdrawn from the IDF reserve. The turret was modified by adding a cast iron counterweight on the back to balance the weight of the new cannon. The mantlet was modified to accommodate the larger 105mm cannon in the turret. All these modifications made the standard Sherman T23 turret meant to be armed with the 76mm cannon, almost unrecognizable. Like on the earlier M50, other changes to the turret of the M51 included the addition of four French production smoke launchers, a large lamp mounted in the mantlet for night operations, the US SCR-538 production radio flanked by another French production radio inside the counterweight, the installation of another antenna on the roof, a ventilator positioned on the counterweight, and the fixing of an M79 support for a Browning M2HB 50 caliber heavy machine gun on vehicles without this support already. The turrets were then mounted on the chassis of M4A1 Shermans, although in rare cases M4A3 Shermans were used. These same tanks had originally been received from France throughout the late 1940s through to the mid-1950s. The HVSS, with its 53.3cm wide tracks, was mounted on all vehicles, while additional equipment was fixed to the sides of the hull in two main configurations. The first one was the same used on the M50, with six jerry can racks, two spare road wheels on the left, one spade on the right, and one big box and three track lengths on each side. The second configuration is different from the M50, featuring six track lengths on the third sides in front of the smoke launches and the installation of another smaller box on each side. On the rear plate were mounted another jerry can support and a telephone connected to the crew's intercom system to keep up communication with the infantry cooperating with the vehicle. 
The whole armor of the M51 was left unchanged. The thickness of the front plate was 63mm and the slope was 47 degrees in order to accommodate the bigger hatches. The turret with a frontal armor thickness of 76mm and the gun mantlet with 89mm of thickness were also left unchanged. On the back of the turret, the addition of a heavy cast iron counterweight significantly increased the thickness, although this was probably not made of ballistic steel. Before 1959, the Israeli army had decided to re-engine all its Shermans with the Continental radial engines. Were powered by the 420 horsepower Continental R975 C4 American engine. In 1959, the IDF tested a new engine produced by the Cummins Engine Company on an M4A3. It was accepted, and the first engine batch arrived in Israel in 1960. The second version of the M50, the Mark II, which was produced up to 1965 was powered by the new 460 horsepower Cummins VT8 460 turbo diesel engine. It is not clear when the first vehicles were re-engined, but by 1965, all the M51s were powered by the Cummins engine. The new 40-ton M51 had a maximum speed of 40 km per hour and a range of about 400 km thanks to the new suspension and the new diesel engine. Beginning sometime in the 1950s, France began development of a new, more powerful 105mm cannon. This cannon, the D1507, and all subsequent derivatives, were 56 calibers in length and featured muzzle brakes. The final evolution of this cannon would be the D1512, more commonly known as the 105mm Model F1, which was standardized as the main armament of the AMX-30 main battle tank. The hydraulic aiming system was the SAMM CH23-1, very similar to the AMX-13 ones. During the testing and evaluation of this cannon, a prototype version was fitted to the T23 turret of a 76mm M1 armed Sherman, resulting in what is believed to be the first M51 prototype. Featuring a T-shaped muzzle brake reminiscent of the AMX-13's 75mm CN 7550, this did not prove successful. In order to achieve a smaller, albeit still acceptable muzzle velocity and reduce the recoil of the cannon, it was shortened to 51 calibers in length, bringing the muzzle velocity down to just over 900 meters per second. A new, more efficient muzzle brake was also fitted, this time resembling that of the 90mm DEFA D921 from the Panad AML90. This new cannon was designated D1508 and would be trialed in a second prototype that did prove successful. One of the benefits of this cannon sharing an evolutionary path with that of the AMX-30's 105mm was the ability to use the same ammunition. Predominantly firing high-explosive anti-tank and high-explosive ammunition, these cannons would be withdrawn from Israeli service before modern armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding Sabre projectiles were developed for the AMX-30, and it is unlikely the tank would be able to handle such projectiles, given the modifications originally needed for the cannon to work in the first place. The secondary armament consisted of two 7.62mm Browning M1919 machine guns, one coaxial and the other in the hull, plus a 12.7mm Browning M2HB in an anti-aircraft position on the turret roof. In the second version of the M51 which existed between the Six Days War and the Yom Kippur War, the machine gun in the hull was removed and sometimes mounted in an anti-aircraft mount and used by the loader. In the third version of the M51, modified in 1975, the 12.7mm machine gun was mounted above the cannon, on the same support where the searchlight was previously fixed, while the 7.62mm Browning was mounted in an anti-aircraft mount near the commander's cupola. This was sometimes flanked by another Browning M1919 used by the loader for a total of four machine guns transported, considerably increasing the firepower of the tanks. With the fourth version, a 60mm mortar was fixed on the turret roof, 
like on the shot in Magach, in the space between the commander's cupola and the loader's hatch. The mortar was mounted after the experiences in the Yom Kippur War, when, in the Sinai Desert, Israeli vehicles were often isolated from the infantry, becoming an easy target for enemy anti-tank teams. The mortar allowed crews to hit these teams, even if they were hiding behind a sand dune or other obstacle, as well as providing support fire for the infantry operating with the vehicle by firing smoke, fragmentation and illuminating ammunition. For the main armament, there were 47 rounds, although some sources claim 55. 40 were in two armored racks in the hull and the other 7 were positioned in the turret basket. During the first years, the ammunition was produced in France and only subsequently entered licensed production in Israel. The secondary armament ammunition was composed of 4,750 rounds for the 7.62mm machine guns and 600 rounds for the 12.7. This ammunition was placed in the hull and in the turret basket. The crew of the M51 consisted of 5 men, as in a standard M4 Sherman. These were the driver and machine gunner in the hull to the left and right of the transmission respectively, the gunner on the right of the turret in front of the tank commander, and the loader who operated on the left side. There were four different versions of the M51, but this upgrade did not concern only the armament, but also the engine exhaust system and vision systems. The first version, the standard one, was in service from 1962 to 1970. It had a new engine deck, with the upper part having protection for the air filters and the lower one with a normal armor plate and used only one M4A3 style exhaust pipe. The second version, which appeared from 1970 to 1975, modified the cooling system on the engine deck with two air intakes on the normal armored plate. The exhaust system was left unchanged. The third version was developed after the Yom Kippur War modified in 1975 and in service until 1978-1981. Again, the modifications concerned the exhaust system that was moved to the lower engine deck roof, while the M4A3 style exhaust pipe was removed. On the fourth version, the upper part of the engine deck was modified for better cooling, while the exhaust system remained unchanged on the lower engine deck. The turret was then modified, adding a 60mm mortar and an external box for its rounds. A Browning M2HB was mounted on a support on the cannon barrel and a Browning M1919 on a support near the commander's cupola. The small spot lamp of US production was moved from the front to the left of the loader's hatch. Infrared periscopes for the commander and the driver and an infrared intensifier were added on the left hull front near the headlamp. Another noteworthy modification is the one that appeared on an unspecified number of M51s of the first version, produced between 1961 and 1965. Due to the immediate need of the idea for a powerful cannon, these entered service in 1962 still equipped with the unmodified M4A1 Sherman engine deck and Continental R975C4 radial engine. It is not known how many of these early versions were produced, nor for how long they remained in service with the IDF in this configuration before being upgraded to use the Cummins VT8460, unless having their engine decks modified accordingly. In the summer of 1964, 90 M51s were converted. During the Six Days War in 1967, the IDF had 177 M51s in service out of a total of 515 vehicles on a Sherman hull. The M51 was presented for the first time in 1962 during a parade in Tel Aviv. Thanks to its cannon, it was considered very effective when fighting against tanks such as the T-3485, T-54 or T-55. However, in the following years, the British 105mm L-52 Royal Ordnance L-7 guns became available with which the M48 Patton, the renowned Magach, and the Centurion, renamed Schott, were armed. The M51s, together with the M50s, were then used in the armored brigades to support the actions of the more modern tanks or for infantry support. The largest use of the M51 was in the Six Days War, fought between 5th and 10th of June 1967. The Six-Day War was a conflict between Israel and its neighbors, the United Arab Republic, the short-lived political confederation of Egypt and Syria, Jordan and Iraq. 
In the months prior to June 1967, tensions between Israel and Egypt became dangerously heightened. Israel reiterated its post-1956 Suez Crisis position that the closure of the Straits of Tehran to Israel shipping would be a casus belli. Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser announced in May that the Straits would be closed to Israeli vessels, and then mobilized Egyptian forces along the border with Israel, ejecting the United Nations Emergency Force. On the 5th of June, Israel launched a series of airstrikes against Egyptian airfields, destroying the majority of the Egyptian Air Force, initially claiming that it had been attacked by Egypt, but later stating that the airstrikes were preemptive. The Israeli armed forces relied on a few Magach and short tanks, and large units of M48A2C2s, M48A3 Pattons, and Centurion Mark Vs. The brigades armed with Shermans had mostly support or reserve duties, although there was no lack of operations carried out by units equipped with upgraded Shermans. About 151s were deployed in the war, half in the Sinai Desert offensive against the Egyptians and the other half in the Golan Heights offensive against the Jordanians, while the rest remained in reserve. That's all for this video. Make sure to follow our website, we'll be releasing new articles on the regular. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Reddit and if you use Discord there's a link to our community server in the description. Also, likes, comments and subscriptions on YouTube are greatly appreciated. If you would like to help us continue to develop and expand, also consider donating on Patreon or PayPal.